Ule Yoyunga, Iglu Ligatu Mutak Sarayunga. I'm Krista Ule Uksawatski. I was raised in Iglu Ligatu, and now I live in Rankin and Lenunavut. I have named the research space Pitoak, which in Inuktitut are the pegs where the Kholak sits. The Kholak is a stone lamp that we used to use to heat our homes and cook our food and was a key component of the Inuit household. I have chosen to name the research space Bitok because I see it as a base for the Inuit Art Center, not only in terms of its location in the building, but also because it's the foundation where we generate knowledge about Inuit art and our understanding of the art. Ublami uvanga atega hali nasigloak carpenter, apang ma atega Joe nasigloak senior, ama mang ma atega Susie Rubin nasigloak. I was part of the Winnipeg Art Gallery naming as because of my Inuvialuktun language, which is Salmiot, and the name that was chosen was Nutak Tamakdood, which means new footprints, and it's pronounced. Nutak Damakturut, and it's a Salakh mute word, Kuyanaini. My name is Verna Damotny. I live in Brandon, Manitoba. I come from a small settlement called Likwang, uh, Foliard's Corner, near Inskart, Manitoba. I was asked to uh, name Colony Street. I called it La Rue Pashchipel. The rue is street, Pashchipel is overflowing. It means uh, the overflowing of waters, like a, a creek or stream that overflows and it flows into different branches of, of overflowing waters. It also means um, culture continuity, knowledge transmission, and also our ancestors' knowledge overflowing to us from underneath the surface. My name is Margaret Rosali, Sioux Valley Dakota Nation. So I named the main floor corridor between the Winnipeg Art Gallery and the Inuit Center. And what I had uh, named it is Ohni Ijaja. Ohni Ijaja means that the light is always on no matter what. It's an everlasting light that uh, is always there. And this is what I liken to the far north because of their, their midnight sun, they call it. And so thank you for giving me the opportunity to have uh, the Dakota represented with our language, you know, in the naming of the Inuit Center. My name is Tanya Nelson, and I'm London Area Director at Arts Council England. And I'm really delighted to be able to talk to Stephen Boris of the Winnipeg Art Gallery about the amazing work they've been doing um, with the Inuit community. Um, and so maybe what I'll just start with is just to say, could you introduce yourself, Stephen, and the project that you won the award for? Thank you, Tanya. My name is Stephen, and I am the Director and CEO of the Winnipeg Art Gallery and Kamiyuk. And of course, Kamayuk is the new Inui Art Center, which is connected to the Winnipeg Art Gallery, which opened two years ago. Fantastic. Um, and can you just tell me a little bit about the kind of rationale behind this project? You know, what are the objectives and aims? The Winnipeg Art Gallery, which is located right in the center of Canada, is, is one of our country's oldest civic art museums. It also has the largest collection in the world of contemporary Inuit art. And we began collecting Inuit art, carvings, prints, drawings, textiles, um, back in the 1950s. And if you understand the geography, Winnipeg um, is very central with the geographies of North South, with trade routes, with military routes, um, medical research with the North. And so it was a logical place also with one of the major Hudson Bay Company depots to be collecting Inui art. So we've assembled this extraordinary collection. We have published, exhibited more than any museum in the world. So you might say we are one of the leaders. 
But the building of the new Inui Art Center called Kamiyuk is a whole rethinking of the museum. And what does that really mean from a colonial construct, um, from a museum idea today? And we believe that this new center, in fact, has rethought, reimagined what a museum can be for the whole community. Fantastic. And and can can you kind of um, go into a little bit more detail about like what are the specific innovations about kind of a community, I guess, based um, part of your museum? What does that entail? What is the kind of new innovation that comes from that? Well, you know, the newest innovation is one of the oldest ways, and that is through <laughs> dialogue. Yeah. Um, creating a forum, a respectful, welcoming, safe place where everyone has a voice, where it's not one specific narrative. So to give you some idea, while we have the largest collection and we have been the leaders in the art historical museum field with Inui Art, the vast majority of what we've produced have has been produced by non-Indigenous voices, curators, researchers, mm -hmm. educators. So in fact, we had to rethink the model and there was no way we could build Kamiya with the Inuit community if they were not leading the project. And by leading, I mean that their voice, their narrative, their history, their perspective is first and foremost. And we support that dialogue at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. So that shifted. It impacted on the building, programs, exhibition, displays. But ultimately, I think weaving through the whole philosophical shift here, is that the voice that is the first voice the visitor sees and understands and hears is the Inui voice. That's, I mean, that's really fantastic. I, I know a lot of museums around the world struggle with um, figuring out how to make maintain connections with the source communities for their collections. Um, and so it's really fantastic that you've been able to, to do this. Can you say a little bit about maybe some of the challenges associated with it um, and, and obviously some of the positive experiences or some of the surprises that might have, you might not have expected. Well, there were, there were many challenges, but there were many, many more opportunities. Um, and some of the challenges maybe start with the fact within the museum sector. And the fact is the Winnipeg Art Gallery, the National Gallery of Canada, most museums, at least in the Western Hemisphere in the last 200 years, are very much built within a colonial model in terms of what we collect, how we document, whose voice leads, what narratives do we choose, and what cultures we choose to um, profile. And then also which cultures we define within the art historical and then within the archeological. Fortunately, the Winnipeg Art Gallery looked at Inui art as simply contemporary art, not as an artifact, not within a natural history museum setting, but as an art museum. And that helped us greatly. So we had to rethink the museum model. We also had to look at the community. They have been seeing Inui art through the eyes of largely a white audience, um, a white authority. So we had to dismantle, rethink, unpack how we presented that culture and shift the responsibility, give up some of that control, that authority, that voice to ensure that it's the Inui voice that comes out. And so you see that in exhibitions, you see that in labels, didactics, publications and programs, but ultimately we had to have a dialogue with the whole community to get them to understand and respect and to allow a much more balancing of the voices. That, that sounds, I mean, a really, I think, you know, inspiring and aspirational um, uh, um, way of dealing with 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 the issue. I was just wondering if there were any challenges when you bring up the idea of you know the traditional museum model, um, which you know, in a lot of times it's about being the keeper of an object and sort of conservation and thinking about these concerns maybe over other things. I mean, were there things that maybe the Inuit community wanted to do that kind of conflicted with museum? practice that you had to kind of deal with and navigate? I would say um, on various levels, whether it be the art historical, pedagogical, whether it be conservation, research, um, custodial. So a good example is um, we in a more colonial system have defined the art object and we've decided um, this is an art object. This is a tool. This is a weapon. This is a ceremonial object. 
for Inui, there is no one definition for artwork. And so mm-hmm. whether it's a toy, a tool, a vessel, um, a, 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 you know, a, a religious object, symbolic object, it doesn't matter to them. But we love to put things in categories. So Inui mm-hmm. wanted us to open that up. So mm-hmm. if we had a utilitarian vessel that would be used in ceremony, we normally would keep it in the vault and never use it. Well, Inui, for their ceremony, for their circle, for bringing elders together, would want to bring out this object, whether it be a kulik to light the light, and use it. Um, and Inuit also love to come back to the objects and rework them. They're living objects, they're animate. So it's not as if you finish the artwork, it goes into the vault, and you don't touch it. These are living objects, and for them, they connect them to their families, their ancestors, their stories. Oh, that's really fascinating. That's really interesting. And I I now really understand what you're saying about the kind of thinking about it in terms of like a museum versus maybe a contemporary art gallery where it continues to be a contemporary work, even though it might be something that had been made a while ago. That's a really interesting dynamic there. Really fantastic. So, no, I mean, it's a constant, we- it's a constant, um, a constant um, dialogue. How can we work together to use art in a way that raises the profile, that connects people, that illuminates, that exposes, that transforms? And it's an amazing value proposition when you have this collection. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so can I ask, because um, when, when we first started, you said the innovation is something we've been doing for a long time, which is dialogue. But um, can I ask you, because I did see that to a certain extent you were using new digital technologies to Mm. facilitate connections. Could you just say a bit more about that? The Kamiyuk, which is the Inuit Art Center, is located in Winnipeg. You know, that's along the 49th parallel. So very, the very south part of Canada. And while you may consider um, Canada being in the north, for Inuit, we're very much in the south. So we're like a long distance. So how do you connect Kamiak with all of these Inuit communities across the Canadian Arctic? How do you do that in a, in a legitimate, respectful, and useful way? Well, there's no question today with technology, with, um, with, with streaming, with working with Cisco that allows for face-to-face discussions in our smart classrooms and studios, we can bring together people. But then ultimately what we did through Canadian Heritage, through the Government of Canada, is we're on the third phase of a huge digitization project where every object in the collection is digitized. So you might say that it's photographed from every possible angle, but then added to that are videos and stories and levels of information. So when a visitor walks into Kamiuk, the new center, and you see a three-story glass visible vault where there's there's at least 5,000 objects on display, you can with your smartphone, with your tablet, with a screen um, in front of you at the kiosk, access every information, move it around, take that work, create your own exhibition, um, look at it from home, but most importantly for all the Inuit communities, they can, as best we can, come into the space, look at their collection, enjoy it, work with it, and, and really contribute. There's ways that we can add through the portals, more stories, more videos, more information, so it's it's very open. It's critical that the visitor doesn't see just one perspective as of a curator or an educator about an object. Oh, that's fantastic. And I, I do think that's the kind of power of digital technology in a sense that you can connect people, but also you can pre- present lots of different views on a particular object or artifact or piece of art. So that's really wonderful. Um, can I then ask in terms of, you, you said the Inuit community has had a large and significant role in kind of building this new wing and being part of the development. Um, what is their ongoing role in kind of the future management governance of the space? Yeah, I love this question because um, it's the one thing I feel I can help. I can help my colleagues, other museums to come up with models that are sustainable that are impactful and relevant. So, you know, it's one thing to go through the process of reconciliation, to respond to the Canadian government's truth and reconciliation calls to action, to look at UNDRIP and and, and language and patrimony and sovereignty. But ultimately, the one way we can truly continue to deliver our mission in being a useful place in the community 
is to ensure that at all levels of the WAG and Kamiuk, in all parts of our organization, there is Inui representation. So at the highest level, there are Inui on my board, on the foundation. There's Inui part of the executive team, the curatorial team, education. We also have a very robust um, guest curator internship program where we're training Inui from the north. So in fact, they're always there with us. And beyond the people that are with us on the ground, it is a presence. It's a, it's a system of accountability. Um, we are aware, we work together. There's a transparency there. And there's a responsibility that we, um, that I have as a white settler, have a responsibility to my Inuit colleagues to be part of a dialogue to ensure reconciliation continues. So we still have the Indigenous Advisory Circle and we have the Sacred Naming Circle. We also have every month ceremony in the space where we bring together not just Inuit, but First Nations and Métis elders. So you have to remember Winnipeg is Treaty 1 Métis homeland. So there's a whole mix of Indigenous peoples. We want to be sure that it's a respectful environment for all of the Indigenous nations. And we're in the center of it, and I believe it's a model that is truly speaking to reconciliation. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of museums will take heart from that because I think many museums really struggle to figure out how they can embed those communities going forward. And it's really interesting to hear how you've done that throughout your organization at all levels of the organization, really fantastic to hear. I mean, I think I think already people who are going to listen to this are going to take a lot away from you. But would you what would be your advice to museums um, that are thinking of, you know, embedding communities more into their practice? Are there certain skills or things museum professionals need to think about when doing this? What would you what would you advise? You know, um, I do believe, and we've just finished building this extraordinarily new museum. So, you know, we could actually talk about the bricks and mortar and it's extraordinary. It's an award-winning design. That is wonderful. And we have this collection and exhibition record. But when I speak to my colleagues um, in the museum sector, every museum director has the chance to build a new museum. It's not always bricks and mortar. And every one of us, because we have what I think is an extraordinary opportunity, our core values are based on objects, cultural objects. And art is one of the most powerful tools that we have, one of the most powerful languages to connect people, regardless of their background, situation, geography, culture, faith, um, gender, race. Art has a way to transcend so many other dialogues. And it's like when you bring a grade three class together and they're looking at one object there's a way that they see things that we couldn't put on the wall in terms of a label. So I tell my colleagues, as long as we want to work with culture in a respectful way, there's a chance that we will continue to be incredibly relevant as a museum. So for me, Kamiak has given us a new lease on life in terms of what museums can be in a sustainable operational way, financial way, because we are contributing more to dialogue in society, whether it's regards to, um, to race, to um, oppression, to systemic racism within Canada, um, sovereignty, issues of geography, climate change, um, the murdered and missing women, the situation in Canada with Indigenous women. We can use art to help people see more, understand more, come together. And that for me is an incredibly powerful value proposition. Fantastic. I mean, it's been really great to speak to you, Stephen. And a, a cra congratulations on your award. Um, and I'm sure everybody's going to take a lot from what you've done. So thank you. Sonia, thank you. It's been a, it's a pleasure and privilege speaking with you today.